Welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about a question that I'm being asked many times in the comment section of my gill making videos or on Twitch. Is leveling up a crafter necessary to make gill and does it provide anything useful above that? Or simply is it worth all the effort you need to spend? The short answer, just do it! And here is the long one. First of all you have to know that the system itself has been heavily simplified throughout the entirety of Shadowbringers or even before that by making macro crafting a possibility that many Realm Reborn crafters were disappointed with. But it is how it is, crafting had never been so simple in 14 like it is now. But in contrast to other games, at least the ones I have played, it still stands out by far and that does not only apply to the complexity of literally offering crafting rotations and different gear etc. But furthermore that even theory crafting can make fun in this section of the game and really offer you content. When I considered doing this in WoW and I did so quite intensively back in Worlds of Draenor and Legion where I came to my first 60 million gold this was literally just pushing the hype that I can actually buy out my subscription for the effort I spent and being a student the advantage of this was insane. Yet for the crafting and theorizing in its context itself this didn't provide me any fun at all where Final Fantasy is definitely able to make a difference. But I'm truly aware of the fact that even if it's more enjoyable and fun to dig into, crafting may not be for everybody. And while providing fun to the one player, it may be lackluster to the other that is focusing on other content of this game but is interested in leveling a crafting job because basically this is the only real way of establishing a gill making business, at least when we're talking about big masses of gill. And today I want to try to help you overcome this anxiety and threshold because leveling up a crafter job is actually so simple right now that literally when watching this video you could easily have started already, auto crafted some beginner ingredients and while proceeding onwards with leveling your blacksmith for example, you can just clean up your room, apartment, house or the garden of your grandma if you have a laptop and she has got some decent Wi-Fi connection. The main thing here that people are always threatened by is the insane amounts of gil you need to invest to do exactly that. It simply is not that much. When proceeding onto the rail of Ishgard restoration or just simply quick synthesizing, you will easily run into cheap materials as well, buff up your XP gain and go for it being AFK for 99 crafts. Then return, click them again and be AFK for another 99 crafts and so on. Besides, Ishgard restoration is super easy if you just follow all the points in my crafter leveling guide and stick to the specific leveling breakpoints. Surely, when going for Ishgard restoration you may need to invest into a solid set of crafter gear for each leveling breakpoint, but this can easily be used for all additional jobs to level and when setting up this crafting set once you only need to add some more weapons to the mix and are good to go. Above that, when the value of quick synthesis begins to decrease later on you can easily just take it slowly and use all of your leaf quest allowances which are regenerated through time and without actually spending time online. So having a stack of 100 can bring you to the next couple of levels with ease and without actually switching to your crafter gear because from heaven's ward onwards some crafter leaf quests will just require the easiest and cheapest ingredients so that you're literally able to get the investment back just by the gill reward of the quest completion. So when taking this into account this really is not expensive at all. But as I kinda got the most balanced and beginner friendly way of leveling a crafter and basically a speedrun version, I'm also looking forward to make another one with even more min maxing in mind which means taking the least amount of gil and spending the least amount of actively participating in crafting content so that you're literally able to get up any job without participation in actual crafting rotations. But more to that in the next couple of weeks. Anyways, long story short, however your opinion may be on the leveling, there are sorted facts that should back you up while crafting is such an important aspect of how your character is able to approach content or to increase the quality of life of certain features this game has to offer. First, crafting provides the easiest way of catching up with current fighter gear in Final Fantasy XIV. Whenever there is a new patch rolling in, crafted fighting gear like the recent Exarchic gear is top notch and outperforms the Savage and Tombstone gear from the previous stages. And especially when being pantomelded, you can even hop into the last bosses of the recent tier without worrying about your gear at all. Which of course offers space for thinking about much more important things like about your job performance and how you can optimize to learn all mechanics of the encounter for example. It's really not like in other MMOs where certain item level requirements could keep you back from being invited or at least from certain tier sets, trinkets or open world context progression who can be mandatory for raiding at a high level. And why does crafting help you when you can easily buy out this stuff for yourself? 
because without crafting this will be an expensive mess and especially on patch day you can easily spend 2 million for a single piece of this gear while crafting a whole set for 2 million on the day after the patch when the crafting ingredients dropped in their initial hype value. So there may actually be no other way than to be able to craft a certain piece by yourself if you want to avoid being financially deprived by other people. Or you may also be able to earn good guilds on these patch days from taking advantage of the crafting game by yourself. So for the reason of this alone I can only recommend to have unlocked the ability to craft stuff by yourself reclaim your initial investment for leveling and crafting your crafter gear and to be on a perfect spot to answer all obstacles and expenditures the market may throw at you. Of course, that directly leads us to the true endgame, glamouring your character, friends or beloved ones, which may not be an important factor for everyone because you can easily walk around like a trash can, still pulling out the number one passes in your group or blasting off ultimate content. The enemy doesn't care about your looks at all, but others do a lot and if you look at any game of your choice, glamouring, transmogging or making style sets is always a thing and heavily influences the whole market. So being able to offer certain glamour gear is always a good backup to have access to and as in Final Fantasy XIV you have access to a vast selection of glamour only items that don't have an actual value for your job strength and potency distribution. Square literally pushes this market by themselves by introducing new glamour items with nearly each patch added. And keep in mind that only crafters can make the expensive stuff and everything that drops randomly all over the world mostly has a very high drop chance and doesn't provide a solid amount of profit when being sold. The same thing applies to bardings which is glamour or armor that your chocobo is able to wear. And while this may not be such a widespread topic than glamouring your character, it's still relevant for all of those that don't like the basic appearance of their yellow companion. And the story doesn't end here, you can also craft furniture, facility equipment or decoration items that are primarily bound to crafting jobs as well. So literally everything or at least 80% of stuff you can have in your inventory that is no specific gear dropping from bosses or being earned through tombstones will have something to do with crafting. And even that gear can interact with it through the melding feature than being able to desynthesize stuff for earning material. Actually I could write a 50 pages article about all the advantages of crafting but let us summarize. Crafting unlocks so many ways of approaching content and making use of it for your own guild capital or to reduce the costs you have for specific parts of the game, quickly leading to being broke as a non-crafter. But of course it's not necessary and you can earn yourself a good guild capital without crafting. But of course there's also one last question, should you level up one crafter and leave it at that? If you're only interested in furniture, a carpenter is a solid option, but on the other hand the whole plethora of crafting only unfolds if you level up all together. For example, you may imagine that a tank would easily be equipped by an armor crafter and blacksmith alone. Nope. You need carpenter and goldsmith for some accessories as well as weaver or leather worker when Square decides to let those pieces look more leatherish or with soft weaved fabric. And you know what? If you already leveled up one crafting job, the others are an easy follow up and I guess you can easily do this in 1-3 to three days without stressing things too much. Having just a single character this will be a once in a lifetime thing. And as Square removed many of the quests and I guess will proceed in doing that, the process is not as overwhelming as it was back in Stormblood or especially in Realm Reborn. So even if it may look like a giant threshold to start with the whole topic, just do it. Head into the description of this video, choose the way of leveling that sounds most appealing to you and go for it. Or if you're so broke that you would expect at any point of this video that I'm telling crafting is useless because you can't afford it with minus 200k gil, then just wait for the third way of leveling a crafter from the poor man's perspective. But for now, give it a try, overcome that threshold and become the warrior of crafting. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy and keep loving by God's blessing. Yes, you will know what that means if you start this crafting journey.